Hello, my name is Dr. Wong Nan Sun, a medical oncologist from Oncocare Cancer Center, Singapore. Today, I'll be talking about the latest treatment options for advanced breast cancer. I hope this video will provide useful information for patients who have been diagnosed with this complex condition. At Oncocare Cancer Center, patients with advanced breast cancer receive care from a breast cancer subspecialist. They have rapid access to timely diagnosis and treatment. They have access to cutting-edge therapeutics including the latest chemotherapy, endocrine therapy, targeted therapy, and immunotherapy. The most important step in the treatment of advanced breast cancer is to determine the subtype of breast cancer which a patient is suffering from. Whenever possible, biopsy from a metastatic site such as lymph node, lung, or liver is used for analysis. This allows the oncologist to classify the breast cancer into three major subtypes, either hormone receptor positive or HER2 positive, or triple negative. Moreover, genetic material from the tumor can potentially be sent for next generation sequencing to discover actionable mutations for which cutting edge targeted therapy can be used. This can prove useful in situations when standard therapy can no longer control the tumor. I will begin by discussing the commonest subtype of breast cancer, hormone receptor positive HER2 negative breast cancer which accounts for 70% of breast cancers. This subtype of breast cancer is driven by estrogens and can be controlled by medications which block the formation of estrogens, namely the aromatase inhibitors, or drugs which prevent the binding of estrogens to hormone receptors in the cancer cell, for example, drugs such as temocephane or palvestrant. For close to 20 years, aromatase inhibitors have been the first-line treatment of choice in advanced hormone receptor positive or to negative breast cancer based on large, well-conducted studies which confirm higher tumor response rates and longer time to tumor progression compared to an older drug tamoxifen. Despite this, the median or average survival was only 30 to 40 months. In the past three years, the arrival of a new class of medications known as CDK4-6 inhibitors has changed this paradigm. CDK4-6 inhibitors prevent cancer cells from dividing, and adding CDK4-6 inhibitors to hormonal therapy can double the duration of cancer control. More importantly, these drugs have been shown in 2019 for the first time to significantly prolong the duration of survival for patients with hormone receptor positive HER2 negative advanced breast cancer. Here, we see data from Mona Lisa 3, a trial which included patients with advanced hormone receptor positive HER2 negative breast cancer who had either not received previous hormonal therapy for advanced disease or had received up to one line of hormonal therapy. Patients were randomized to receive hormonal therapy with Forbestron alone or to receive the combination of Forbestron and the CDK4-6 inhibitor rapocyclin. The results showed that overall survival exceeded 45 months in the combination group, a remarkable improvement over what could be achieved with aromatase inhibitors alone historically. HER2 positive breast cancers account for 20% of breast cancer cases. These cancers have excess copies of HER2 protein, which lead to activation of signaling pathways that drive cancer growth and spread. For many years, we have used the combination of chemotherapy and trastuzumab, a drug which is also known as Herceptin, to treat advanced HER2 positive breast cancer. Trastuzumab is a monoclonal antibody which binds to the HER2 receptor and synergizes with chemotherapy to destroy HER2-positive breast cancer cells. In the past five years, several new anti-HER2 drugs have been introduced to fight this subtype of breast cancer. One example is Pertuzumab, a drug which is also known as Pregeta. This drug works like Trastuzumab, but binds to a different part of the HER2 receptor. In a landmark trial, additional Pertuzumab to chemotherapy plus Trastuzumab achieved an overall survival of 50 months which has doubled the duration of overall survival which we could achieve back in 2005. Besides pertuzumab, a number of anti-HER2 drugs are available. For example, TDM1, also known as Ketsyla, is a drug which acts like a Trojan horse or a smart bomb. It delivers a highly active chemotherapy directly into HER2-positive breast cancer cells while sparing normal cells. More recently, an exciting new drug, Ducatinib, has shown activity in patients who have progressed on pertuzumab and cancilla. Tucatinib is a small molecule which inhibits the HER2 receptor at the tyrosine kinase domain.
Finally, I'll discuss triple negative breast cancer. This is an uncommon subtype of breast cancer and accounts for about 10% of all cases. Triple negative breast cancers are so called because they lack receptors for estrogen and progesterone, and they also lack HER2. Hence, they cannot be treated with hormonal therapy or with anti HER2 drugs. The standard approach is to use chemotherapy alone. Some patients who have triple negative breast cancers triggered by a specific mutation in the BRCA gene can be treated with PARP inhibitors. These are drugs which selectively target BRCA mutation positive breast cancer cells. Tumor cells carry two abnormal copies of this gene and are thus unable to repair double stranded DNA breaks induced by these PARP inhibitors. An exciting development has been the recognition that triple negative breast cancers can respond to immunotherapy using anti PD1 or anti PDL1 drugs. Tumor cells are able to evade immune cells by expressing PDL1, which binds to PD1 on immune cells. Anti PD1 and anti PDL1 drugs block this binding, allowing immune cells to seek out and destroy cancer cells. Pembrolizumab is an anti PD1 antibody which has been shown to control advanced triple negative breast cancer. Here are two studies of single-agent pembrolizumab in advanced triple negative breast cancer, showing response rates of approximately 20%. Although the response rates are low, a remarkable observation is that very durable responses can be seen once there is a response, with some patients having tumor control for more than one year. More recently, an exciting new study combining chemotherapy with the anti pd one drug akizolizumab has shown early signals of improved survival compared to chemotherapy alone. The overall survival achieved in this study was 25 months, which represents a major improvement over the historical data from 10 years ago, which showed overall survival of just 13 months in this difficult-to-treat subtype of advanced breast cancer. In conclusion, there have been numerous advances in the treatment of advanced breast cancer, and patients have access to these cutting-edge treatments here in Oncocare Cancer Centre, Singapore. Thank you for watching this video.